terrestrial sense we've been telling you about a Swiss man who was at contact with what he says are over 100 times with aliens from a place called Pleiades, which is a planet somewhere in our galaxy out there. And he's just published a book with all kinds of pictures and all kinds of texts about that contact he's had. By a Swiss farmer named Billy Meyer. Meyer has hundreds of other photos some, and some metal fragments from the spaceship. The photos that are not in the current book are still being tested, and so are the metal fragments. Marcel Vogel, a research scientist with IBM, tells us about one piece of metal that he examined under an electron microscope. It's a very unusual combination. From a metallurgical standpoint, I've shown these to metallurgists, and they shake their heads. And the most unusual thing is the purity of these metals in the Jason C2 one another without their cross-contamination. They're very sensitive to light, and as soon as I expose them to intense light from my microscope, the metal oxidizes very rapidly and just breaks down. I've never seen that. This, is, this really took me back. That only happened on Friday. And then going back in tonight, I'm having another go at observing and measuring. Uh, okay, Dr. Vogel, uh, could you give us, uh, could you tell us about your background briefly? Good. I'm a senior scientist with IBM in the <coughs> General Products Division Laboratories at Monterey and Cottle Road. My work has been from earliest childhood in the study of the conversion of energy mm -hmm. inside of crystals. I started at the age of seven on the ex exploration of bioluminescence, of firefly, the light of the firefly, and by 11, I was synthesizing the chemical that made the firefly glow, the 3 amino thalas 1,4-dione. It's a chemical analog to that which is in the firefly. And from that point on, I've focused my life on the study of luminescence, the conversion of energy in crystals. Mm -hmm. The materials that are in your color television, that are fluorescent lamps, and built my own corporation in this, and then developed for IBM the Magnetic Disk Coding Memory System, which now IBM uses throughout the world in their uh, disk memories. I've developed the coding. We hold the basic patents for this material, and I've been into the field of material science all of my life. For the past 20 years, since 1960, <coughs> I've developed a skill in optical microscopy mm. because I wanted to study liquid crystal systems. I said there would be a very important new discoveries made in liquid crystals. These will be useful in watches, display devices, and I proceeded to develop these materials for IBM. Mm. With that, I have put together probably the most complete optical microscopic gear, about almost a quarter of a million dollars in optical microscopes. And this brings us to the present point where I was contacted in April mm -hmm. by Mr. Jim Delatosa, and they told me about this unusual sighting on, uh, in Switzerland mm -hmm. by Mr. Myers. I've had a rather negative feeling towards UFOs because I said, unless I have something physical that I can get my hands on, just reported sightings and things like that have no interest to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, from a human interest standpoint, I said, fine, I'll see what I can do to investigate these specimens that were left by these uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. And so... Mr. Delatosa contacted Mr. Stevens, and he wrote to me mm -hmm. the letter and sent me three specimens. And did you analyze all of Yes, I did. If you want, now I can show you some of the results that we got with the first specimen yes. that was given to us. It is silvery, as you can see, in color. It looks like it has been melted. This is the raw specimen which was mounted in plastic, lapped and polished in Switzerland. And now you can see this metal in its pristine state. 
It is remarkable. We will now illuminate it by oblique illumination. It has many facets of color to it. Taking out the analyzer to bring out some more of the metallic sheen and luster to it. As one goes to higher magnifications on this specimen, one will see other fascinating details. This type of research takes many hours to fully exemplify. We'll look at the backside of this specimen now. This is the backside of the specimen and under cross field polarized light one does see these white crystalline birefringent deposits. The light, luminous area to the right is just a reflective glare from the light source as one can see here, but we're dealing now with polarized light and there is this spot area <coughs> illuminated. One side is highly metallic, the other has some forms of crystalline occlusions attached to it. I'm using no objective lens in the Zeiss Ultrafo 3B and I'm using what is called the pH position bringing in a Bertrand lens and I'm focusing with the Bertrand lens to bring out the details. It gives me the lowest power in the microscope so I can bring the specimen totally into the field of view that one is seeing here. It's a very small but highly convoluted specimen so it takes many forms of light. The cesium iodide to incandescent bulbs on the left and the right hand side. Now we'll move to a higher level of magnification of this and see what we will find. We're looking at this specimen now with Nomarski interference contrast. The objective is a 8x pole so we're e between 80 and 120 diameters magnification. Under interference contrast, one sees now a vein of highly birefringent material running through the specimen we did not see before. What I'm pointing out is that to see the details in this specimen requires an extensive use of all the tools of microscopy. Now we can see banded structures in the center of the field, like full lines as one would encounter in lava-like flows. The material looks like it has been extended in a flow process, but it does not show what one would see in a furnace from extensive heating. The remark has been made that this specimen was made by a cold flow process. And this seems to be the case here because one finds areas of structure which are highly birefringent, as one sees in here, very distinct lines. Here is a complete pattern of material flowing in and precisely stopping here one can see a better detailing of this. It's like a material has been kneaded and rolled over and flowed together. Here's another band. There you can see a good view of the structure now on the surface. I'm putting the analyzer in, rotating it. We'll go now from the quartz iodide lamp that we're using here, 100 watt to a 250 watt cesium iodide. Much more detail is evident, and one gets better penetration of the light into the sample. 